What is up, ladies and gentlemen? It is your boy Goblins. Oh my god. So today Bungie dropped a new weekly update and it's a big weekly update, okay? It's once again we're talking about the we're we're talking about the Taken King pre-patch, which is patch 2.0. And this is once again just an extension of my earlier video because like I said, they're gonna be rolling out details about patch 2.0 as it kinda comes along within the weeks. So super cool stuff. Now this one is huge. This one is talking about weapon patches and weapon balancing. And from the sounds of it and everything I've read so far, this is the update to balance everything, which is crazy and kind of shitty, but at the same time, super, super awesome. So I'm pretty stoked for it. So I'm going to run you guys down on all the details of what's happening to your favorite weapon come briefly before the Titan King. So Bungie went ahead and showed this little graph here showing the most popular weapons that are being used in Iron Banner right now. And of course, number one being the fucking Thorn. We've talked about this. We have talked about this multiple times, I think, at this point. Um, I mostly talked about it when it came to the Trials of Osiris video when I first did Trials of Osiris. And you just can't help but to notice how many thorns are out there nowadays. Oh my god, it's insane! Thorn is, honestly, it's the be-all, end-all meta, unfortunately, with PvP. I'm a heavy PvP-based person, so this, this is a big update for me, essentially. Second best weapon used was Red Death, third best, Last Word. Then it was Hawkmoon, Mythoclass, Regime, Mita Multi-Tool, Universal Remote, Vision of Confluence, and Bad Juju. Those are the most popular weapons over the last week of Iron Banner, essentially. So once again, as I've said before, this is an update of like, it's an update that's a huge piss off, but at the same time, super awesome. It's, it's really hard to say, I'm super online about it. So the ultimate decision of all this balancing and everything has been made by senior design lead Sage Merrill. As you guys all know him, he is known as the Beard. He kind of looks like a like a fucking extra for Vikings. <laughs> but but he's a cool guy. He's been with Bungie for a very long time. You might be like me and most commonly remember him from the ODST vidox and all that stuff back when ODST was a cool thing. So. You can either hate him or love him at this point because once again he is the be all end all for this decision making and uh yeah yeah the beard is uh the beard is making the decisions here you know what i'm saying yeah I, i'll i'll go ahead and say my, all my friends are pretty pissed off at you so sage if you're watching this they uh they don't like you right now they don't like you anyways let's talk about the changes so first off we'll list off the goals of each weapon that they're trying to get to and the changes that are coming in order to make that weapon so so the goal of the auto rifle is that the auto rifle is optimal at close to medium range. Damage, stability, and range are tuned such that players desire stability for reliable close quarters damage or range for better accuracy and increased damage at a, at a distance. So that would mean, for example, rearranging your perks for, so that you get better range on your assault rifle or better damage out of it depending on what perks you've got essentially. They want to elevate auto rifles so they are more competitive option in PvP and simultaneously more satisfying to use in PvE. The changes coming to auto rifles are increased base damage, start damage fall off close to the player to emphasize its role as a medium to close range weapon, small reduction in base stability meaning landing shots at optimal range is unaffected but repeated precision hits require more weapon control to land consistently. They're also giving it a damage boost against AI combatants by 10% so if you're fighting of course non-guardian enemies in PvE, then it is what it is. You get an extra 10% of damage, which is pretty fucking cool. So here's some images they were showing in the update, just kind of giving you an, an idea of the damage fall off. As you guys can see up close and personal, they're doing a lot more damage than they are doing a little bit farther away, so yeah. The next one is the Pulse Rifle, and the Pulse Rifle ultimately will remain unaffected with minor changes to it. Think of it as kind of like a buff, but at the same time kind of a nerf. You know, it, it is what it is. So the goals for the Pulse Rifle is Pulse Rifle is supposed to be optimal at medium range, but can also still be effective to engage enemies at close or medium long range. The rate of fire sets a pace for players to track moving targets and then deliver precision damage in bursts. They want the Pulse Rifle to feel strong in PvE, but they don't want it to become the only competitive option. And they also want to additionally increase their efficiency as a PvE weapon. Because yeah, honestly, I'm not going to use my three little words against anything PvE, it's mostly PvE based. So, that being said, the changes that are coming to the Pulse Rifle are reduced base damage to the medium rate of fire by about 2.5%. So if you're using something like Red Death or your Bad Juju, unfortunately it is going to get a base damage drop by once again 2.5%, but it really is nothing noticeable. Especially when we consider the fact the damage of the Pulse Rifle was raised by 12% when they first changed guns. In PvP, it's supposed to be a burst to kill, all precision hits type of weapon, which is 2 or 3 depending on the victim's stat armor. Meaning the idea, once again, is that Pulse Rifle is going to reward you for being patient with your shots and if you do it all in a proper order you're gonna get someone down in two or three hits that's pretty sweet so once again i'm gonna refer to three little words as a weapon three little words is a expansion one weapon that was a crucible gun super low rate of fire but super huge impact on the thing that it drops people in like once again to like two bursts it's insane they're also giving all pulse rifles a small reduction in base stability meaning a burst should still land all shots at optimal range but three precision hits will require more weapon control to land consistently they're also increasing magazine size for all base inventory stats. Next one is scout rifles. Now, I mostly use a scout rifle, so this kind of gets me stoked for it. 
Now the goal for the scout rifle is that it's the best primary weapon for long range engagements. Best primary. Not, not a sniper rifle, that's a secondary. Best primary. And the sky rifle is supposed to perform best when landing paced precision shots. Its rate of fire and optics are tuned so that scout rifles are a little harder to use effectively close in. Which, once again, makes sense because it's going to be a primarily long range weapon. The changes coming to the scout rifle are... Increased base damage for medium to high rate of fire scout rifles. Now they went and said that for PvP, this definitely does not affect the time to kill in PvP on a guardian with full health. Which is kind of weird. Does that mean I'm going to be doing more damage or not? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> Anyway, still, uh, we'll see what happens, I guess. Fuck, whatever. They're also increasing the magazine size for all base inventory stats, reducing final accuracy from firing from hip, meaning fast firing outside of your ADS, which means aim down sights, will be less accurate. They're also going to boost damage by 5% against AI combatants, which is, which is once again really cool for PvE. So, perfect for me because I like using my Mighty Multitude. It's like my favorite gun. It really is. Now, next up, we're talking about hand cannons. This, this is the big one. This is the big kahuna, okay? Because we did talk about Thorn a little bit, which we're going to get into more later. But uh, let's just list off the basic base hand cannon things that they're changing. So, the goals for the hand cannon are that it's supposed to be optimal to close to medium range. And hand cannons are optimal when shots are paced, but become less effective when fired quickly. This essentially rewards agility under fire fire, precision targeting, and snapshots. Hand cannons cannot reliably compete with scout rifles at long range. So they're really trying to make that gap very apparent. So with that being said, the changes that are coming to the hand cannon are, it's going to start damage fall off closer to the player to limit long range lethality. There's also going to be a small reduction in ADS or accuracy, which once again means aim down sights, targeted at making long range snap shooting less reliable. Which, if you've ever played against the Hawkmoon, is exactly what happens. We're also reducing final accuracy when firing from the hip, meaning fast firing from the hip is less reliable. So, my apologies to any last word users, holy shit. <laughs> now this one, they're reducing the magazine size for all base inventory stats, and they're reducing base optics, aka zoom, for all hand cannons. Meaning your aim down sights, your ADS, now grants more width in favor of depth. Now next up, we're talking about shotguns. Now as you guys know, shotguns became extremely, extremely effective come patch 1.1.1, and in PvE, they just decimate. They do an extra 100% damage in PvE when it came to patch 1.1.1, which is, which is insane, that's nuts. It's fucking crazy. But nowadays, we got problems with Fell Winters. We got problems with those extra accuracy and range perks with all shotguns. So now we're going to change that up because it essentially has been the alternative fusion rifle since the fusion rifles also got nerfed. Now, the goal of the shotgun is to make it more effective at very close range and to complement melee attacks and other course quarters class builds. It's supposed to offensively close in on enemies with a shotgun as a risk slash reward timing and game. Now they said they're also going to curve the shotgun effectiveness in PvE slightly to reintroduce some risk when closing in on a powerful enemy. Which makes sense, because once again, PvE PvE shotguns got fucking buffed an extra 100% when, when patch 1.1.1 came up, which is, once again, huge, huge, huge. So, with that being said, the changes to the shotgun are shotgun perks that enhance lethality at range should be less effective when combined with a high initial range stat. So with that being said, they reduce shot pack accuracy buff by 30%, which Holy shit, that sucks. That's nuts. Range Finder adds a 5% base range increase on ADS, which was 20%, which is definitely not the case anymore. 5%? From 20% to 5%, wow. They're also reducing precision damage multiplier on shotguns by 10%, and reduced damage against AI combatants by 10%. So now it's only 90% extra damage against all AI enemies in PvE, which is, which is, you know, it's not that big of a difference for PvE, but huge for PvP. This is going to make a huge, huge difference in PvP. Meaning that they're going to be reintroducing fusion rifles a little bit more because not many people use them anymore. Which we're going to get into right now. So the fusion rifle goes go accordingly that the fusion rifles are supposed to be at mid-range where targets are easier to track, but they're not close enough to attack while charging up. This requires your combat foresight and the ability to predict a target's movement to use successfully. It also is noted that it should not be an easy thing to find and build a fusion rifle that can achieve maximum range. Which makes sense. It's, 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 you know, it rewards you essentially for trying to constantly rebuild that fusion rifle to make the p perfect fusion rifle. So the major changes happening to the fusion rifle are that slow charging, high impact fusion rifles will have decreased range values. Which means it makes it more difficult to max out range for these weapons. Your projectile speed for fusion rifles is slightly reduced, and it emphasizes the need to lead a target outside of medium range. They're also improving accuracy for short range fusion rifles and reduce accuracy for long range fusion rifles, giving it that extra bit of balance. Meaning that, yeah, once again, you still can't focus on using fusion rifles, ideally. That, or you just have to find one that's kind of like in the middle of like short and long range. Like a medium range fusion rifle, you know? So yeah. Now while we're talking accuracy, there is some changes that came to sniper rifles as well. And I don't think these ones are, are as big as, as 
what we think they are. I will say before talking about it, they're making some changes to final round so that final round can't just fucking kill you in one hit. Come Trials of Osiris or Iron Banner, which is good. We don't, we don't, we don't need that anymore. Okay. Yeah. So the goal of the sniper rifle is that they're supposed to be optimal at long range. Of course, it's, that's one that makes sense. And of course, difficult to use for medium to short range combat. The sniper rifle rewards thumb skill with high damage against precision targets, and the final round perk on sniper rifles should still require precision shots. So once again, the change is mostly for final round, and that is that final round on sniper rifles buffs precision damage only, not base damage. And this change only affects this perk when combined with sniper rifles. So final round will be the same on every other weapon except for sniper rifles. Sniper rifles are required to get that precision shot. Or else it's like, that's it, you're not gonna, you know, that's it, you know, it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen! No more dying in one shot in Trials of Osiris, Iron Banner. Yeah, yeah! Yeah, yeah! And they talk a little bit about rocket launchers as well, and there's not a huge amount of changes that are happening to them. Just very, very slight differences. So the goal of the rocket launcher is to deal massive AoE damage from a distance, and rockets are optimal when placed in the middle of a group. Which makes sense. More kills. Yeah. The changes that are happening to the rocket launchers is that there's going to be a slight increase in base blast radius, and grenades and horseshoe proximity detonations are reduced, so... As in Vengeance, uh, Hunger of Crota, a little bit different nowadays, unfortunately. So those are just like the base things that are changing. They're also going to do some exotic weapon tuning, which is once again, it's, it's going to be a huge thing. The first one they talk about is the Hard Light, which I strongly believe is going to be the new Suros Regime after we talk about it. It's going to be the, it's going to be the new old Suros Regime, if that makes sense. Yeah, like... Remember when Cyrils was like disgustingly awesome? It's gonna be the same idea as that now. So the major hard light changes that are happening is that they're going to increase the base stability from 65 to 80. 65 to 80? That's, that's fucking, that's huge. That's huge. The gun's gonna be so stable now. I've talked about it in my review before. If you up, the, if you make the hard light have max stability, it's, it's an amazing gun because it, ha it is so stable. So maxing the base stability from 65 to 80, that's, that's fucking huge, man. That thing's gonna be a beast. They also increased the amount of bounce count for hard light projectiles, so instead of just bouncing once and kind of that's it, it just, it just dis disintegrates. Hard light shots are apparently going to bounce multiple times, which is really cool. And here's the big thing for the hard light. Hard light projectiles are not affected by damage fall off. What the fuck? What? So they're giving this gun additional stability, Meaning you're going to be able to hit for better range if you put some range perks on it. And the projectiles will have no damage fall off. None. None whatsoever. You could snipe someone with this if you have stability on it. Wow. As I said before, this is going to be the new Cyrus regime. The new old Cyrus regime. You're going to want the hard light come the Taken King, I promise you. <laughs> it, like, they're go you're going to want it now, if anything. And because we're talking about auto rifles still, they also said they're changing the necrochasm, which is something that we've been screaming at Bungie to do for a long time. We've been, we've been like yelling at them about this because it's like the necrochasm's awful right now. It's brutal. So the changes that are happening to the necrochasm is that they're changing the base stability from 40 to 60, increasing the magazine size. The curse bringer perk will always trigger on a precision kill and the curse bringer explosion has increased radius and deals more damage, which now means it makes more sense to use the necrochasm because that curse bringer explosion is going to it's going to deal a lot more damage and it makes a lot more sense, which is really really fucking cool. I I want it now. I really do. I don't have the necrochasm, but I want it now. So now we're talking about hand cannons. As you guys know, hand cannons got a bit of a nerf. The first one we're going to talk about is the last word. So the last word is apparently is the fastest time to kill primary in the game, which makes sense because you just fucking hit fire that shit. All done. GG. You're good. And the changes that are coming to it is that they're reducing the range stat from 20 to 10 and reducing the stability from 30 to 20. So it's getting, it's getting a decent nerf in that sense. That's, that's having the range stat and pretty much having that stability stat. Well, taking like a third away from it essentially, which is still pretty big. They're reducing its effective range while aiming down the sights, and increasing accuracy and precision damage when aim assist scale when firing from the hip. They're also fixing bugs with hip fire damage bonus applying incorrectly. So, yeah, still kind of shitty, but it makes more sense in regards to the, how the weapon actually works, which is pretty crazy. Now, the thorn. Bungie went and shared this little image here, showing the activeness of the thorn in PvP, and it, it, yeah, we've been talking about this. Look at this shit. Garbage. Absolute garbage. The meta is broken with a thorn, but if you have a thorn and you're using it, it's great for you. It works awesome. This is why I have my thorn ready to use whenever I need to, but you know, it's, it once again is breaking the meta of the game. We want some more balance, which I th really think this patch is going to bring. So the main changes that are happening to the thorn is that they're reducing the base damage of thorns mark of the devourer, which is of course the damage over time perk to roughly one third of what it was in PVP and PVE. Oh my God. 
That fucking sucks. I'm not gonna lie. That's that's not that I really care too much. That's that sucks. One third of dot damage in PvP and PvE. It's like it's it's pretty much they're taking away that perk for you, Mew, in a sense, which kind of sucks, but it also makes sense. But that's only for one shot. The alternative to that patch is that they're going to allow the DOT to stack up to five times across multiple landed projectiles. Meaning this is a net buff for Thorn's DOT, but reduces the lethality of the weapon in PvP. So the more shots you get off on someone, the more damage it's going to do from Mark of the Devourer. Each Thorn shot is going to deal more DOT damage, or DOT poison essentially, so the more you hit them, the more it's going to stack essentially. They're also making some changes to the Hawk Moon. Now I just did my Hawk Moon review, it's an awesome gun, this is like the be all end all of all hand cannons if you like the way a hand cannon just feels as a whole. Now the changes that are coming to the Hawk Moon is that they're adding a stack limit to the luck in the chamber and holding aces so that only two of the bonus perks will ever stack on one round. This essentially prevents players using the Hawkmoon from one hit killing full health players in PvP. They're also going to add two more rounds to the Hawkmoon's magazine when holding aces, the perk, is unlocked. Meaning when it's upgraded, it's going to go from 13 shots of the mag to 15 shots of the mag. Meaning you have three shots out of 15 that are going to do extra damage. And luck in the chamber damage bonus has been reduced by 3%, which isn't too crazy, but it is still a little something. Now we're going to get into the sniper rifles. Uh, nothing has changed too much for the exotic sniper rifles, but there's some stuff you're going to like and some stuff you're going to be like, what the fuck? What the fuck? Now the first one we're talking about is Icebreaker. Actually, this change is kind of shitty. They're making it so it's got a longer recharge time, which, yeah kind of sucks and it's almost kind of unnecessary i feel they're going to increase the recharge time for icebreaker rounds to one every eight seconds instead of one every five seconds which yeah once again kind of i feel like that's kind of uncalled for but whatever i'll still use it still a great gun i'm not complaining the next is the no land beyond the no land beyond has been a shitty weapon for everyone everyone hates the no land beyond but they're actually going to make it a weapon that's kind of liked amongst people. And so the No Land Beyond weapon changes that are going down is that they're going to increase weapon handling speed for faster time to aim, ready, and stow. Meaning all in all it's going to be a faster weapon as a whole. They're also adjusting sights to fix overlap slash parallax issues while aimed, which is necessary. Thank you. That's a good that's a good one right there. And they're going to increase time decay of the master to 8 seconds. On top of that, they're adding an additional 20% precision damage while the master is active. So all in all, really good perks. And that extra 20% precision damage actually might be able to one-hit people if if we're talking about full damage modifiers, things like, like Trials of Osiris and Iron Banner. So it'll actually be really cool to see if that's the case, which, I mean, makes sense in that stuff because there's a lot of reward to gain using the No Land Beyond, and it, it is now only getting more reward for using it. It's a very hard weapon to use, but in the hands of a skilled player, it is used very effectively. They also are changing the Black Hammer, and one said that even though it's not an exotic, it's sought after the same essentially which is very true so the black hammer works like you get precision shots and it's infinite for precision shots as you're shooting the no land beyond and, and like the head of an enemy or something like that it keeps on giving you that one single shot it never wastes a shot it's infinite over and over again but now the changes that are happening to the black hammer they're they're nerfing it essentially it's kind of shitty but at the same time it makes sense unfortunately but it is what it is <laughs> that's all i'll say okay I'll let you make the decision uh the changes happening to the black hammer is that they're increasing ammo inventory to 18 rounds and the white nail perk now pulls ammo from your inventory so once again instead of having infinite shots you have a mag size of 18 and white nail perk only pulls ammo from your inventory so it's not infinite it's just whatever else you got unfortunately it's kind of shitty but once again it makes sense it just that it just really sucks it just really sucks okay it's it used to be so good now it's now it's not nearly as crazy it's still good though but not not super crazy yeah they're also giving a <laughs> so lord of worlds is giving getting a huge fucking buff like a huge buff um they were straight up said this weapon is a bruiser and doesn't need help but they're granting better bonuses for the lord of wolves perk itself and that is that they're tripling the recovery boost bonus for allies granted by lord of wolves what the fuck? <laughs> is it because nobody has it? Are they going to take... Okay, so here's what's going to happen. They're going to add that buff right now, and then they're going to... And then it's going to be, like, way too overpowered, and then people, as they start to get it more often, are going to stop using it. But that's crazy. Tripled recovery boost bonus for all allies granted by Lord of Wolves. Wow. Wow. That's nuts. That makes Quadron look like a little bitch, which is sick. And last but not least, they're changing the Galahorn, finally. I don't, I don't like to see this change, but I mean, I guess it has to be done. But like, not really, you know? The Galahorn is like, it is what we call the cheat code. Everyone would use the cheat code whenever times got tough. It makes sense. The Galahorn, aka Ballerhorn, was, uh, yeah, it's a GTA cheat code and they're changing that. 
the changes that are happening to the Gallahorn is that they're reducing damage of wolf pack rounds. We they never mention it how by how much, but it kind of sucks that they're changing it. That's that's fucking crazy. Not my wolf pack rounds, man. Man, fuck. That's my god damn it. Gallahorn's not going to be as relevant, unfortunately. Um, but for balance reasons, I guess it is what it is. We're creating balance, and that's what they got to do sometimes. Um, meaning it's just not going to be a full-on cheat code anymore. But yeah, whatever. Oh, okay, I'm sorry for the long ass video guys, but I just went over every change that's happening So I hope that's informative. I hope that helps you guys out um, A lot of them are really cool changes and it's gonna add a lot of balance But at the same time too, we're getting a lot of take a lot of shit taken away from us I mean it makes sense for them to be balancing Gallahorns like we all love as a collective and balancing Thorn at the same time Which is kind of selective, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know I I want to like this balancing change at the same time Bungie's kind of going to break the guns that I already know how to use and make me relearn them, which is kind of shitty. But at the same time, kind of cool. Keeps the experience fresh and things will actually be balanced after this. Or will they? We don't know. That's what we thought last time, but they weren't. So who knows? Who knows? I don't know. I guess we'll find out come the Taken King. That's unfortunately all I got to talk about today. And that is definitely all I got to talk about for today, guys. That's been a lot of information. I hope, once again, it was informative. And thank you guys for lasting that long in a video. As I always say, drop a like for your boy, Goblins, if you enjoyed the video. Now, once again, this is a Taken King pre-patch. It's not happening quite yet. It is part of patch 2.0. We'll probably see it roll out like three or four days before the Taken King actually comes out. So with that all being said, take it easy, guys. Have a general good, and I'll be back with more Destiny content. So stay subscribed and stay tuned. Peace out! Like. Jet Li, Jackie Chan, Chuck Norris all put together, right? And that's like, they're walking into that alleyway. And of course, they, like, as for any good Chuck Norris, Jackie Chan, Jet Li movie, they, like, of course, kick all the gangsters' asses. That's what they do. Right? Right. So that's what this, that's the same idea as this. It's the fucking same thing. It's awesome.